I'm a huge fan of this as a spectator. I know players are a little bit back and forth on it right now, but as time goes on, as we have more tournaments like this, I have a, I have a good feeling that they'll eventually adapt and definitely it'll be good. But I, I think that you know something that's new. It's it's you know the natural reaction is to to reject it. You know because you, you're used to banning pick. You know you're used to seeing everything that's happening in front of you. This blind ban thing. It's all this lock picking and everything. And there's so many different strategies involved with it. And I think it's yeah. The reason people resist it is because they, they don't want to, you know, like, not that they don't want to adapt, but it's, you know, if they're not, you know, completely used to it and, you know, they make a mistake, then they, they blame it on the mode. Yeah, so. Um, we got one more pick here for Lang before the locks start, of course, or lock picks, that is. So Tempest was the first pick for Clan Milk. Huh. Polywalk, Priest, and Bubbles, and then Electrician Forsaken. I, you, yeah, you're, you're doing that because I know exactly why. I mean, this goes to what we talked about now. Uh, Lang... They did. Lang's here. gonna be in control now. Do they take both Aluna and Glacius and and screw Clan Milk? It's they put themselves in a tough position here. Yeah, I, I don't know. They're gonna have to give up their pebbles though, because if I was Lang, I would I would take Aluna and Glacius, and then I mean you can work a lineup around that easily. Magnus. Yeah, that's and uh, of course I'm sure Clan Milk definitely thought of that themselves. Not like that just completely passed them. So they, they'll they'll probably grab the Aluna though. Yeah. I'm thinking there's no way they're going to pass up on Aluna. Okay. Huh. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm... I still don't see how they could do this if they don't... I mean, if they took a Luna Glacius... If they take a Luna Glacius here... Now, I will say... No, that could... Mm, that could make a very powerful tri-lane. <laughs> Magnus, Luna yep. Glacius with Bubbles, probably... So that, by all means, is a very legitimate option here. Definitely. So, Clan Milk, I mean... Then you got a Valkyrie, a Kraken, and a Pebbles... It wouldn't be Pebbles. Eh, it could be. I, I would think it would have to be what, Valkyrie? <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah. Ooh, okay. So they did leave them the... They might not Delicious. even... They, they're gonna they have to. I mean, there's no way. <laughs> I, guess, I guess they really feel like they don't have enough, you know, damage if they picked up the Glacius. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that that was also, again, a point to bring up. Too. It, it ultimately came down to Link's choice, control, but, you know, did they feel comfortable, you know... They could have screwed Clan Milk, but would would have that have been their best option? I think is what it ultimately comes down to. And, you know, they decided to go with the Valkyrie pick instead. So Pebbles getting passed up by both. I find that interesting. But again, that's I think with Locks too. Depending on how the banning phase goes and your first three picks, it strategies may switch up. So I'm not going to say him. Yeah, I I just don't know. I think that really, if they had done the grab the Glacius as well, they would have had a Tempest stuck doing support. Yeah, <laughs> and I really think it would have been difficult for them to to really move off that it would have been a delayed ring of sorcery and you know it just it puts so much pressure on the tempest yeah well here we go loading into the game now obviously hopefully uh we'll probably have a pause I mean, yeah, there you go <laughs> just uh you ask for it and you shall receive uh so the player's gonna do some disconnecting and reconnecting like usual make it competitive and uh, then we'll be good to go so but yeah that so that actually finished off Fairly strong here for Clan Milk, I think it's safe to say. I mean, um, I w I'm probably going to be a... F well, I think I'd have Forsaken or Moraxis solo, you think? Um, Probably Forsaken, or... Well, they might put Moraxis... Yeah, they might put Moraxis mid and put Electrician in bottom. Yeah. That would work. But um, it's really personal preference. I know Cakes is normally... Uh, actually, M Milk Fat does play mid Moraxis, doesn't he? Oh my god, they're confusing me now. <laughs> Moravius does play solo a lot too, though, for the team. So I do wonder if that may be a decision. But yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I I really think you go either way. Yeah. Um, now our Hellborn team. I mean, this is a very very aggressive team over mm -hmm. here. A lot a lot of roam potential. You know, not necessarily the hard. They're not going to out carry our Legion team. I don't think so. Uh, I think that is safe to say. But they will bring a lot of early aggression, and that's where you got to think Lang. That's where they have to shine to be successful yeah. in this game. So. I think they're probably going to bring out a tri-lane. Oh, what do we got? Right, Magnus, a Luna Valk? Yeah. Because yeah. you can line true, up yeah. the stun so well in the arrow. Yeah. I think. Because I think Bubbles and Poliwag are better solos anyway. Yeah, that's... that's uh, uh, yeah, no, I think that's very true. <laughs> no, they're really looking at it, so... Um, yeah, so here we are. We'll see how they eventually do line it, but I think that tri-lane, very likely possibility, who it will be matched up against. That's always... Nope. The interesting yep. thing because yes, no. yeah. Oh, look at that! That's that's an extremely. We're on top all of a sudden, huh? 
they uh, they did not scout it out. It's just a change of heart at the last second. So, but that that will prove to be the better choice, as now they'll be matched up against a more Axis Glacius instead of the solo electrician. Well, the electrician so. wouldn't have gone any farm, but you'd be sitting there with a farmer Axis. So. Exactly, exactly. So. This is uh, going to work out pretty well for a Hellborn team, and, you know, we'll see if Clan Milk decides to make an adjustment because of that. Uh, whether or not they uh, move around. Obviously, scouting with the courier right there. Is that the Congor courier? Yeah, it is. Flying Congor is awesome. Ooh, Glacius needs to be careful, actually. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Glacius, eat through the trees. Magma's done. Magma's done. Oh, he's just out of race. The arrow will connect. Oh, the three-second arrow's done. And Glacius will fall right here. So, Hellborn team off to a fantastic start. As a Luna gets the Bloodlust kill, very good arrow coming out from Dawes there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not so much on the Magma Stun, but <laughs> it was intimidating. Level 1 Magma Stun, it's, it's a very short range. It's yeah, especially when you're the one playing Magmas, it gets even yeah, shorter. Exactly. <laughs> it's, you think it's like, oh, I got this, that's easy stuff. Well, wait, I was only got halfway all of a sudden. Um, People are like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just stun him, just stun him. You're like, I'm not close enough, I'm not close enough. And yep. you're like two feet behind him. That's but, uh, that works. Mm hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, Hellborn actually has the lane advantages. I, I don't think there's any adjustment that really Legion could make. Yeah. I, I mean, moving Tempest up into the jungle up there is really dangerous for him against the tri-lane. And uh, putting the Electrician up there is just going to get him killed. Yeah, so it's basically a sacrifice for Hellborn or Legion's side of, you know what, they, they made the smart decision and we'll just have to go with it. But yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, obviously with the Tempest up here, as you mentioned against the tri-lane, there's a good potential that Magnus and Aluna can play a lot of roaming. And he could very likely get caught out. So probably best to just have Tempest sit in the Legion jungle, get him that early Ring of Sorcery as you like to see. Now, speaking of recent nerfs, of course, Tempest is another one of these heroes that we see a, a bit. And his elementals did get a bit of a nerf. Not, nothing too crazy, but uh, going to hurt his farming, early farm potential just a little bit earlier on. But that could, you know, prove to be impactful as the game progresses here. So... Uh, we'll uh, what exactly did they nerf about them? I, the, I have, oh, uh, the damage, I believe. Got, oh, uh, by the way, Glacier's at the top one. Once again, a lot of pressure. Morax is doing everything it can to keep him alive. Health push is going to be used, but Glacius will fall. Morax is going for a counter kind of Luna, but Milkfan needs to be careful. Oh, look at Valkyrie! The what is Valkyrie doing? Oh my <laughs> gosh, she nearly died wow. right there. That quick stun was just ready for Morax. She is lucky he didn't use that at the last second. Mm. Or else she would have been dead. Doss is not paying attention to his life. Me and you were both sitting there doing the same thing. We're like, what are you? Yeah. Just saw the creeps attack him, and I, you're like, stop! I would be lying if I said I've never done that myself, though. I mean, it's one well, of those yeah. cases where you're like, oh, yeah, we're going to get this kill. You're kill so him, focused on tunnel vision, and all of a sudden creeps kill you. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Creeps do damage, too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, was the elementals, though, that's right, on uh, Tempest, they the damage got nerfed slightly. Oh, okay. At the earlier level. Or it's... I want to say it was more normalized because it used to be an extreme range. Oh, yeah, 20. It, yeah, yeah, they deal 20 physical damage. Ex yeah, so it's now just static, so. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't, I, you know, I was told you I was doing my move. And no, yeah. With the loss of the power this week, I haven't really been able to keep up. Like I said, there's. It seems like there have been uh, more and more change, which is a good thing. I mean, that's definitely what a lot of people ask for. And, it's always good that the balance team do, doing work and can bounce for that. Nice, bottom. yeah. Bubbles, he ported with a shell surf. Great job by Clan Milk baiting that port. And a fresh blow here is in a lot of trouble, and he will go down cakes, actually. On Electrician getting credit for the kill. Meanwhile, the top lane, the Hellborn team going to go for a counter kill themselves. Morax is dropping quickly. A couple more auto attacks. Yes, Aluna at the last second. Just got in range to get hers off with that 600 range and gets the kill. So at Good least attack. they kill Morax at the top. Her attack seems like it's way further than 600 range sometimes. Yeah. Pyromancer is very similar for me. I, I don't know what, this is what about that hero, but it seems like, yeah, Aluna, Py like that range, it just keeps going forever. <laughs> I think I think so the fact that Valkyrie has a faster, like, throw animation, like when she hits the target to throw, like yeah. her thing takes, but the projectile for Pyromancer and Aluna takes a little bit longer to actually get thrown out, so. Yeah. Actually, it looks like Aluna's coming mid. Nope, just checking out the scene. Uh, anyways, though, I mean, three to one hero kill advantage for a Hellborn team. Obviously, Aluna three zero and zero, so no creep kills, but she's managing three hundred gold per minute. That's always uh, pretty skillful, right there. But Hellborn team in a pretty comfortable spot. Taking a closer look, though, it seems like our Legion side, especially with the solos, both Electrician and Forsaken Archer, are having uh, a pretty good time when it comes to that creep farm. So the middle lane and the top and bottom lane, safe to say, being one here 
by uh, Clan Milk, so that could prove to be the deciding factor. Yeah, um, Forsaken Archer is really the one that, one of the main people on Legion that you need to get farm, you know. She's going to carry them to the late game. Yeah. Along with the Electrician, but I, know, I mean the Electrician's getting farm as well. Um, he's over 300 gold per minute. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they, they do have the right people farming. It may not look like it right now, but, you know, they still do have a distinct advantage in, in that department with their two solos. Yeah, you got Electrician, the top farm in the game, but pretty comfortable lead, in fact. Uh, obviously, you're so early on, but 339 gold per minute and counting. So, yeah, Cakes uh, having a very good time. And now, Moraxis, on the other hand, you know, isn't doing so well. And that's but kind of expected with this matchup and the Clan Milk going into this, knowing that, that he was going to be kind of that sacrificial lamb for the team in that sense of that you want to get him farmed, but he really isn't going to get much. But still, uh, may not be the worst point of news for then when it's all said and done. But this this does go back to the fact that our Hellborn team, again, a very aggressive early team. And um, obviously they are leading 3-1 to one hero kills early on, but, you know, Will they, and you know, I think that they should keep that pressure up as much as possible. Getting bubbles at level six, as we saw in Moravis last game for Clan Milk. Uh, yeah, speaking of bubbles, he's gonna get a lot of pressure here from Cakes and Electrician. The Electric Shield taking him down. Nice juke through the trees right there. And bubbles maybe far enough. Oh, no static grip because not enough mana, but that Electric Shield gets close enough once again. Activates it, the take cover, not gonna matter. And down goes bubbles. So Middle. he tried so hard. Wow, yeah, War Trap coming out. It gets a kill on a Polywalk Priest for Saken Archer, though. <laughs> we'll barely get away, so. A couple of kills right there for our Legion team. Yeah, that just goes to show that what we were saying before, the, the bottom and the middle lane, you know, top lane may be getting crushed, but those two lanes are still up top. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got mesmerized. Well, speaking of the top lane getting crushed, more access once again going to fall right here, oh, taking the dumpster tongue. Good job at Valkyrie leaping and getting the call to Valkyrie, as well as the final auto attack, so. It's Does it's Go ahead. better player than, than you may have expected, uh, huh? You know what? <laughs> Obviously, I was giving him a hard time. I, I you know, I like to think I know the guy. He's consider him a friend, and again, he's done a lot for the Han community. So messing around with him, but yeah, he's. I, I honestly hadn't seen him play too much, but he's uh, he's not doing too shabby in this tournament. Yeah, not at matches, all. So he was Maraxis last time, and he was pretty impressive. Well, Maraxis, I mean, let's be honest, not a difficult hero, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. The, the only thing that I really feel about this this uh, Hellborn team, and I know there's certain people who agree, I don't like Valkyrie as your hard carry, you know, like your heaviest carry on your team. I don't like that at all. I really don't think she has the same potential as other heroes, you know, like I think Forsaken Archer can out carry easy. Uh, I just, it, it seems like putting all your eggs into the, the basket of Valkyrie is it's a risky maneuver and it's been proven not to work for a lot of teams. Well... Yeah, but again, that, that's where that picking stage comes into play. I mean, could from the locking, do you think they would have been better off going with the Pebbles instead of the Valkyrie? As, by the way, speaking of Valkyrie, she is going to drop right here. So, But, you know, maybe that does make more sense that you weren't going to have any chance of out carrying them. Uh, bottom lane, Bubbles actually launched a nice down by Magnus at the last second, though. The path on top. Oh, but the static grip just reach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, look at that kill. Bubbles will fall. But Electrician will also go down, but a hell of a play by Cakes right there. Somehow, still in range of that static grip. Um, so anyways, a couple kills happening, and now Tempest even going to help push this top tower here. But question, I mean, would they have been better off with the Pebbles instead of Valkyrie here? Um, They may have been, uh, but the, you can see the early form on Valkyrie isn't really that great, you know. She didn't get too many of the early kills, so I, I don't know. I th I, maybe the, the Valkyrie was a safer play, but uh, the Valkyrie is only at 250 GPM, and if you were on Pebbles right now, you'd probably be hurting even more than that. Yeah. And I guess the, the lanes, like the tri lane with a Valkyrie or a Pebbles and then a Magmus and a Luna, I mean, it's, it's definitely can be powerful, but still not the most ideal. So, anyways, it's all hindsight's 2020, of course, as they say. More axes somehow still staying alive. What am I saying somehow? He is going to die in the end, but. It is more access after all. The tower taking a lot of damage, but will survive. Arrow's going to miss right there. However, Tempest not out of the woods just yet. Literally, in fact, going in deeper, trying to port out. The Kel field, though, going to be used. Just a guarantee to keep him in place. And down he goes. So well played right there from a Hellborn side as Glacius will run away before he gets locked down. But in the meantime, the bottom lane and the middle lane are being pushed in from a Legion team. Playing very smart. They know those Homecoming Stone ports were used. And so they're going to take advantage of that at the other lanes, which is, you know, we see this from top tier teams all the time. It's it's weird. Um, on that last engage, um, I thought I saw Mookie's buy his his 
pickled brain a long time ago, like a minute or two ago, and he still didn't have it delivered to him when he was pushing top. Oh wow, yeah, maybe that was... Yeah, just got caught up doing the gank and then eventually pushing that. Didn't get the kill. Glacius! Oh, the last second, the final auto attack goes out, and Luna will get the kill, but at what cost right here? Magnus barely staying alive. The tower hopefully doesn't attack him, it shouldn't. And he will be fine, but oh, we're trying to pour down. And actually, both ports are successful right there. I believe that was Polywalk and Aluna able to get out. So good job by Lang right there, getting the kill and getting out of there somehow. But as I mentioned, the bottom lane, the tower will fall as Electrician takes it out. Now it's 400 gold per minute, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I think this Electrician is, he's getting ridiculous. Yeah, that is... Uh, Yep, he's finished his Helmet of Black Legion, it's on the Courier now. Think a Ring of Sorcery on him? Gonna be next? Uh, yeah, probably. Standard build. Another one of those for the team, as well as Electrician. Oh, he's gonna go in right here on a Polywalk. Arrow's gonna stop that, though. Um, but, you know, that's one of those cases that you'd rather use the Arrow for much better purposes than simply that. Polywalk Priest being chased down. The very quick Electrician with those Ghost Marchers eventually chasing them down. Gets the kill. Nice dinner from Magnus at the last second. Not going to matter too much, however, Kel or Crippling Folly will hit Magnus, but he will be fine when it's all said and done. So, our Legion team, though, they're grouping up together, feeling pretty confident they can make something happen here in the middle lane. Uh, we got Lang on our Hellborn side, Magnus especially pushing up. He needs to be very careful. We'll take that freeze, however, and we're going to go to a pause. He yeah, is in the trouble. The thing about uh, Clan Milk's team right now is they can, they can push and they can team fight with just these four people because of how, how far the Electrician is, yep. and uh, Tempest, oh, Forsaken Archer, and in the meantime you have Maraxxus up top recovering his farm. Yep. Oh, Magnus is probably going to fall, yep, the static grip, arrow's going to hit, not going to matter though, you see the kill happening, Crippling Folly hits Aluna, as well as the piercing arrows, and down she goes. But as you mentioned, Maraxxus recovering in a farm, pushing the top tower as well, so even if they somehow did hold it off, they still have that going on, Legion, which they didn't anyways. Tower. So Clan Milk is definitely starting to pull ahead quite a bit. 5,300 gold lead, 4,200 experience. And again, Electrician goes back with a static grip. He's using that ability quite a bit. Not too often we see that early on from Electricians, but... Uh, oh, that Tempest Ultimate keeping him alive. Bubbles get locked out. Will fall. Polywalk Priest will eventually go down. The Call of Valkyrie will take out Tempest. But wow, what a Tempest Ultimate at the last second to get those two kills to happen. Magma stuns on a Glacius. Oh, the final auto attack, actually the Steam Bath, I believe, takes him down. So pretty uh, chaotic game we are definitely having here, at least when it comes to hero kills, so that's the good thing. But again, overall, as far as stats go, Clan Milk in a pretty comfortable spot. And Moraxis finally wants to join the party. He wants to make some kills happen. Nice axe, I believe it's just out of range, but it won't matter. As you see the honey badger time. The static grip again. Yeah, he's, he's using that every cooldown, it seems like. It's only level one, too. Yeah, he's uh, doing work with it. So, and they're also going to pick up a little here. Double tap from Ravis. Twelve to ten hero kills. We're only twelve minutes into this game. This is yeah, ridiculous. Action packed. See, the thing about tri lanes is they're great and everything. You know, they they cause you to really seriously win one lane. But you have a level four Luna, level five Magnus. Yeah. You know, Clan Milk played it great by uh, not overreacting to it at all. You know, not shifting their lanes entirely because they have. You know, three heroes, four heroes who are higher level than almost every other hero on their team. Yeah. They got two level 10s, and, you know, Hellborn doesn't even have one level 10. Because the Valkyrie was sharing some experience. Yeah, and, you know, this is definitely one of those cases of, uh, you, you look at the Hellborn team, we talked about this a little bit earlier, how it, they're not going to outcarry this Legion team. It's just not going to happen. So... They, they, they had a strategy built around early aggression. They need Now, they have 10 hero kills. I mean, it's, it is respectable with the amount of kills that they have, but it's just Clan Milk. They've almost been playing even more aggressive themselves <laughs> to an extent. And yeah. Have, uh, and winning both the, the middle and the bottom lanes in the solo roles definitely helped as well. And that goes, kind of goes back to that trial lane that you talked about. I'd say that um, oh, at bottom we might have... No, nope, he's getting away. Yeah, okay. The um, the Hellborn's team's kills, uh, looks like Hasted, F.A. at bottom. Yeluna, you're, you're dead. <laughs> Not even worth saying, huh? Just, just um, Hellborn's team got probably 80% of their kills early game, you know, within the first 8 minutes or so, probably, 9 minutes. But, you know, the last 5 or 6 minutes, and all, all Legion. Yeah. And, you know, they got their ring, so they're ready to push, so... That's what we're going to be seeing. 
Yeah, they are indeed going to group up here. All five of them good to go. Trying to make something happen. You see the one and a half second arrow on electric on the front lines, but he don't care. He's purposely up there. Magmus, a nice eruption from behind. Only really hitting Ele or Glacius, though. For second arc, taking a little bit, but Electrician up in the front lines as well as Moraxis. Doing so much up here. Valkyrie trying to stay alive. And again, the static rip. Eventually going to fall right here. Electrician, the electric shield. Not going to be enough. But Moraxis with that quake stun takes out Bubbles. The tower is uh, going to survive right here. But a hat trick finish off by Milk Fat. He is still somehow alive. He's got another quake stun in two seconds. He's going to port, going to port, going to port. Uh, oh my god, he lived. <laughs> it's it is it's so funny. When you look at heroes like Electrician and Moraxis, you know. You always refer to them as being tanky, but you really don't understand how tanky they were. They were the only two people past that tower. The rest of the team couldn't go by, yeah. so it was just them two. They did all that work, pretty much. Yeah, they, the fat asses were in the front lines, and they did their job quite effectively right there. So, Even, even you know, I would say, probably was a little bit of an overextension by them to be that far. Mm -hmm. You know, because they were way past the tower, and the, the tower still has 300 health. Your Glacius almost died to the tower. So, uh, I mean... Those heroes are tanky, and both of them are actually pretty farmed, yeah. I'd say. Raxus is headed in that department. He's got 600 <laughs> to his Helm of the Black Legion. Yeah, after the start that he had, we keep looking back at that. I mean, now 262 gold per minute, doing fantastic here. So, uh, Milk Fat by all means recovered. Got the Steam Boots on his way to the Helm, as you mentioned. Um, not too shabby. Electrician hasn't gone the Ring of Sorcery just yet, but... Kind of what we assume to be the fall. I mean, you got our Hellborn side. What do they have for themselves? Really, really nothing. Right, Portal on. keys are not happening soon. Valkyrie's farm, very minimal. It's just, uh... A Luna just hit six. Yeah. Ugly on all, on so many levels. Yeah, pretty much. Luna didn't have six that last fight. That's why uh, I think Milk was really pressing their advantage, because, you know, they didn't have all their ultimates on their team, so... Yeah. Well, that's, that's one they're probably looking for, you know, the, the stun is ridiculous. Yeah. Every game every game that I'm in with an Aluna, I, I just always can say to myself, how, how does such a stun happen? <laughs> Those five second red stuns, it's pretty brutal. Again, it's, it takes a little bit to line up, but if you know what you're doing, it's not necessarily the hardest thing in the world. It's just a matter of timing it correctly in the positioning. So um, We are going to have initiation in the middle lane, maybe? And nope, Arrow's going to miss, actually. So more axe. It was more axe, even if it did hit probably be pretty suicidal for a Hellborn team to jump in right there. Yeah, he just presses R and he's fine. <laughs> exactly, and as well as the whole team being there in the in the meantime. Ready to support. Uh, so. I don't really think he needed them. No, yeah, sure, what am I saying? It's more access again. He presses W, R, and walks away. Or he runs into them and yeah, kills, kills all. Exactly. It's, it's more access. Overpowered. He tells right? us every single time. Uh, he does let us know who the hell he is. Cake's actually going to get caught right here. And a lot of buzz. Speaking of being tank, Electrician quite the tank, but not enough. Everything was used, but oh, Magmus. Is he stuck himself? It looked like he was for a little bit, and he had the Steam Bat, though. And he's going to be able to get away. So, good pick off right there for the Hellborn team. Step in the right direction, at least. Oh, speaking of Moraxis, what got caught the burst damage? Where's the R? He's Silas there. He gets it off. He lets him know who he is. And the turn around, that Tempest ultimate for the ages right there. The Legion team, a hell of a team fight. And Moraxis stays alive when it's all said. Now he gets picked off at the last second by Aluna. So, at least Aluna had her fun with the Deja Vu, trying to run away. But Forsaken Archer catches. Nice job with the poor trying to juke them, but... It ain't gonna happen to Luda, so uh, finishing the genocide right there. Great Tempest ultimate coming out from Mookies. And uh, I think uh, could be getting to a point already once again of Clan Milk getting an earlier victory here. Yeah, Moravius has 500 gold per minute, so I, I don't really think Clan Milk is feeling uncomfortable at this point. I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they have any reason to, to be in a awkward feeling position so I mean they're just uh, quite the lead here and again this now I will say this is kind of interesting you know looking back on tournaments that I've been hosting you know you got it's Gosu, Fanatics also tournaments and obviously now Clan Milk here um, from history it seems like the teams I guess it's kind of been mixed results with the teams that host the tournaments doing well in them I, th um, I think Fanatic yeah. has actually won one of theirs yeah but, Fanatic won one there yeah. um, but, but they deferred the prize didn't they I don't know, actually. I, don't I thought they deferred the prize oh, did they? that they hosted. Yeah, to the second place team. Good guys, Fanatic. How about that? I remember um, something like that. And I was like, oh, that's, that's nice. I don't see why they would do that, to be honest. I mean, hell, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, they were trying to... It. It's, not like, it's not like it was rigged or anything. 
No, I mean, I just think they were trying to, you know, show that they're they're about the community. True. I could be wrong, though. I, Maybe they... Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm not too sure about that, but... Anyways, my point being, you know, is there that, that a sense of added pressure for a team like Clan Milk? Because it is their organization hosting this event, I wonder if uh, that comes into play, if the organization yeah, will better I, win this damn tournament now. I think so. I think probably if Fnatic was hosting a Fnatic tournament, you know, Fnatic came in, like, third place, they'd be like, well... They'll be like, why did you, it's like our tournament, you probably should have done better, you know? Yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I could see the, the added pressure, but, yeah, you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah, when it's all said and done, I mean, you know, it's, 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 still, it's, a, it's an event anyways, and everyone's going to be on their yeah, top level, so. I don't know if it's so much about the teams as about the organization, you know, like, this is not necessarily about Clan Milk, the clan, it's about, you know, the... The organization they have behind it that's hosting the tournament. Yeah. Hellborn team, they're going to perhaps give a one last shot right here. May work out pretty well. Nice five second out of Forsaken Archer. The Magnus Eruption, they'll stall in this drive. Forsaken Archer stays alive as she had an invisible rune that she gets to use right there. Turning this around now. Bubbles gets caught and will fall. The rest of the Legion team doing work in the meantime. And already three are dead on the side of Lang. Polywalk Priest able to sneak away. As is Aluna, not so lucky though. Moravis on that Forsaken Archer picks up the double tap. Talk about good use of that invisibility rune right there. Thank God that he had that, because no doubt the saving grace for him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that was a chance there for the Hellborn team to maybe make something happen, but obviously it didn't work out, and another tower is going to be lost. I think I don't know who canceled that uh, Magma Soul, but uh, they were a lifesaver there, because that probably would have taken out the uh, Saken Archer and the, at least on a good chunk of damage to the Tempest. Yeah, yeah, that would have been pretty big, but as, as for I'm not exactly sure who stole it, but... Whoever it was, job well done. Uh, Tempest does still have his ultimate, by the way, speaking of him. He's got a portal key ultimate ready to go. Just a matter of finding that opportunity. It looks like the Legion team, however. They've had enough with this push. Can't blame them. I mean, they're up 18,000 golden experience here. Only 20 minutes into the game, so uh, might yeah, as well get further ahead even. Yeah, there's no need to pressure further in than they have to. They have people who are at half-life, so... Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a case again. Our Hellborn side, they, they just... Oh, excuse me. They don't have that carry potential compared to our Legion team, and they've already lost 90% of their chance of being victorious in this game because of that. So, you know, obviously, more so mistakes are going to have to happen on Clan Milk's part. They had a nice pick of the Tempest right there, and actually, they're going to get Forsaken Archer here, so. You know, he doesn't. Some positive kills. I don't think he had an Infus rune. The, uh, oh, he just bought that then. He just bought that. Yeah. <laughs> so he did have it, because he had a bottle before, and I was like, oh. Then I noticed the Sashen Shroud, so I was, yeah, he must have just bought that and sold his bottle. Yeah, so. Huh. That's, a, that's actually, I... Do you think that's a troll pickup, or is that actually yeah. a legitimate pickup? It's a troll pickup. Yeah. I don't know, Ganjiro's pretty, pretty powerful. It's strong, but it's expensive, too. It is. I think it's, is it more expensive it's than a The most ball? expensive item in the game, yeah, I believe. 63,000? Yeah. yeah. Wingbo's 56,000. Yeah. 6,300. 5600, yeah. <laughs> 6300. Uh, You're never farming. We've been farming that. for a while. <laughs> we would have like 10 hour They, they should make an item in the game where it's just like 20,000 gold. It's like the ultimate uh -huh. item. It gives you like plus one to health or something like that. But that, Talk about troll item. You spend 20,000 yeah. gold on an item that gives you like plus like one I, health. I can finally afford it. It's like plus one percent <laughs> health regen. Yes. Um, so yeah, 22 minutes in. Obviously, again, this is a third round matchup here between Clan Milk and Lang. I am not sure what it stands for. Uh, loving everyone is not gay. <laughs> yeah, loving that? everyone is not gay. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. There about you that. Go. I looked it up before, and I was like, "Why did they register as cats then?" <laughs> as you can see, I was very yeah. There was that whole confusing <laughs> thing that first game. So, loving everyone is not gay. All right, that's. Uh, it must be some type of uh, equality type thing that they yeah, got going. You know. Sending, uh, sending a good message out there. Uh, Moo Magma's gonna get caught out actually. And Magmus going to be a dead Magmus um, right there, so unfortunately. Uh, and now it is a 5 versus 4 in favor of the Legion team as they're going to group up here and most likely go for another push. I mean, the bigger and better items have been picked up, of course, so might as well try for something now that all five of them are full strength. Of course, they still got that Tempest ultimate with the portal key ready to go. Hellborn team, Magmus is going to be up in 15 seconds. They're going to be up, maybe just wait for him and then give it one last stand here to have any signs of hope, but if they don't get it here, I think it's... Uh, getting to that concede point for Lang, so we'll see. 
what they do. And not going to port with that. At least going to give up the tower here. Good ward aside over the ledge, by the way. Definitely started seeing this more and more, getting that vision into the base the as uh, the tower goes down. Tower. But Hellborn team, they are full strength now, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, but they, uh, they got a portal key actually picked up on Polywog. Oh, that's good. Finally. And yeah, a Frostman on Valkyrie. So they're starting to get something. Well, uh, gonna need that because it looks like, ooh, five second arrow in the background on the Glacius actually. Bobble's running in there is that call the Valkyrie, or excuse me, the uh, Valkyrie Prison. Warner Revelation is down, so it doesn't really matter though. Magnus jumped to the background. He is eventually gonna fall. The Moraxis again activates the ultimate, letting them know who he is. And he's just surviving. That Tempest ultimate catches a couple of heroes. Aluna gets caught in. Valkyrie able to leap away at the last second. So she'll survive for now. Polywog Priest though picked off. And the Graveyard Tongue coming out on top of that. Magmas is going to get caught by the Saturn Crypt. Will eventually fall. Electrician somehow single alive. The Shells are not going to snipe him, though. Bubbles ports in, but now he's actually in a little bit of trouble himself. Going to try to port out. But there's the vote to concede. And it looks like Lang has finally had enough. And Clan Milk can be advancing on to the, I believe, what now is the round of 16, actually. So congratulations to them. Yep, very well played. I, I think that uh, they reacted perfectly to what was... Um Presented to them with yeah. the, the front lane, etc. Yeah, that, that was a fun drafting stage, I will say. You know, it got us thinking a little bit and some, uh, are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? And that's, again, I think a thing I think I like about lock picking, and it's going to be a fun to cast it. But, um, and again, they didn't pick bad by any means, just when they picked a the lineup like they did, it was, you got to be aggressive. And not that they weren't, but um, you have to have that early lead. And it just started to slip away and, it was very little recovery chance, it seemed like, for them. So, Clan Milk, though, very deserving of that victory there. So, they move on. And Lang, the road ends here for them. Unfortunately, yeah. Dawes tried his best. We'll see uh, if he can bring more in the future, though. But I believe that's going to do it for you casting, though, Snoopy. So, before we, yep. we wrap this one up, I do want to say uh, thank you for joining. And uh, any shout-outs or anything you want to say before you head up back to work? Oh, well, I want to thank you guys for letting me, you know, shoutcast again. Had fun. It was. Um, that's pretty much it, you know. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we get to do it again, maybe tomorrow. All right, we'll see. Uh, tomorrow coming along. Of course, the semifinals and the finals of tom are tomorrow of this tournament. But there is more cast coming up today, at least a couple more guys, so definitely stick around for that. But Snoopy, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, for this cast, though, uh, once again, I was breaking CBK. Joining me with Snoopy here. And as always, stay tuned to HauntCast.com for much, much more coverage. we got another match. We're going to be actually our round of 16. Going to be coming up next, guys. Stay tuned until we'll be right back.